Thank you very much for joining us. I am pretty much equal parts terrified and excited, being that this is quite intentionally putting myself in a vulnerable place to share my heart without the opportunity to hit that backspace button and uh, reword anything. So thank you ahead of time for your grace, for your patience, and for hearing my heart even if my words get in the way. Um, let's see, I'm going to start right on in. I value your time, I value my time, and I wanna make sure that we make the most of our moments. So whether you have a paperback version, or a Kindle, or a PDF, or if you're just here to listen, we're gonna start at the very, very beginning of practicing gratitude, right at the dedication. So these pages are dedicated to my sisterhood of faith and women who, like myself, might have things go wrong. For example, I have an alarm telling me it's bedtime. Not tonight. <laughs> Got the kiddos down and our bedtime's later. But in the meantime, we're gonna have to look at gratitude. Gratitude for sleep, gratitude for opportunities to be flexible and transparent. Let's try this again. Okay, introduction, here we go. These pages are dedicated to my sisterhood of faith. And I need to stop there. Um, this book may reach the hands of someone who doesn't know Jesus, who doesn't claim the gospel as their anchor to knowing God and being friends with the maker of the universe. This book might be an opportunity for someone who does not know Jesus as their rescuer and redeemer to see what it looks like to practice gratitude as a follower of Christ. And if, an un, if a non-Christian gets a hold of this book, then oh, I so hope that it will direct them to understand more of who God is and may Jesus use that to his glory. But at the same time, I did not write Practicing Gratitude for the non-Christian. So if you, if you are watching this or listening to this, and you do not know Jesus as your personal savior, if he is not your rescuer redeemer, then please, please hear the gospel in this. See who God is, and may he work in your heart to know him more. I'm going to speak for the rest of these sessions to the Christian woman, however. This book was written to, to me, I wanted to encapsulate all the things that I have learned over the past several years about who God is and how he's been shaping my understanding of gratitude, of biblical thankfulness. And so if, if you would hear my heart of love and invitation to anyone who does not know yet Jesus as your rescuer, but at the same time, I'm going to mostly speak to those who are already having their um, life dedicated in mind and heart and purpose to Jesus. So these pages are dedicated to my sisterhood of faith, women who, like myself, desire to know God more and long to be filled with gratitude. Women who, at one time or another, have been the seeker, because at one point we all have had that desire, that raging fire within us where we are so excited about what God is doing and the hope to know more and dive more into who he is. But at some times we've also been the complacent where good enough is good enough. And we're no longer lost, we're no longer bound for hell and from the outside our life looks pretty good. That complacency can rob us of so much joy. It can rob us of so many opportunities to know what God has called us to be. So we have been the seeker. At times we've been the complacent. And sometimes we've been the lonely. Where it feels like this journey, sometimes it feels like we are the only one on this same path. Like no one understands. And there are points in our life where whether it is after stubbing our toe or watching a friend die, or whether it is your souffle did not fluff, or you're just having a hard day, 
there are moments of loneliness that creep in to our hearts and into our minds and our thought processes. And it is so, so very hard in those moments. And yet, at one time when we are lonely, Jesus is our comforter. And we can understand more of his character as the great comforter when we are lonely. And that is absolutely beautiful. So we are sometimes the lonely, but we are always the comforted. At some time or another, we have been the broken, where we just can't where everything absolutely falls apart. And yet again, it is in those broken moments that we understand that Jesus is the great healer. And he is the one who steps into our awareness even more. Not that he has ever left, but simply we are allowed to, or we are grown to see him work more mildly. And he allows us to be healed. We can be the stagnant, not just complacent, but not even caring to grow. And then the growing, which is always the place where we want to be. But regardless of what station or what status we are in at this time, we have always been loved. You have always been loved. You have always been seen. You have always been cherished and chosen. Before the very foundations of the earth were created, you were chosen. You were specifically ordained to bring God glory in a beautiful, rich, wonderful way. You have been chosen. You are remembered. You are purposed. You are called. And you are claimed. May Jesus grant us the desire to know God more, that we might better trust his heart and thus trust his plan. For in trusting his plan, we will more fully understand that his ways echo his faithful goodness. And in that, we give him thanks and are truly grateful. Now again, my heart in this book, Practicing Gratitude, is that we would see more of who God is. And in seeing his character, we would fall in love with all the aspects of who he reveals himself to be. And when you trust who God says he is, then you can trust every single thing he does. And in that, everything that he ordains to bring into our lives, we can be grateful for. We can be grateful to him. And when that's hard, we can be grateful simply for who he is. Looking at thankfulness is not enough. I wanted to find a chapter or a heading that would kind of grab the mind and say, I'm sorry, what, was, what do you mean here? So if we're talking about practicing gratitude, how knowing God leads to biblical thankfulness, and the very first thing I say is thankfulness is not enough, then why bother? Well, simply because thankfulness, the act of having a happy heart and a um, conscious uh, thank you-ness towards the world isn't got to cut it. it. It's just not going to work. You can say thank you to the sky for being blue and it's not going to care. You can have a thank you-ness for just the simple conveniences of life and it's not going to do anything. So thankfulness is not going to do anything but biblical thankfulness when we add the gospel, when we find gospel at the very heart of thankfulness, that is where everything starts becoming beautiful and worth it. So thankfulness will not fix your life, but biblical thankfulness will fix your eyes upon Jesus. And in him, your life will be transformed. It's miraculous how you can be going through the exact same situation two days in a row and the first day all you see is how it impacts you and your comfort and it's really really hard the second day your perspective is on how jesus will use this to your growth your good and his glory and the hard doesn't go away but it is infinitely worth it and seeing from his perspective when we fix our eyes on Jesus, our life, us, we will be transformed despite our circumstances. And thankfulness will not make everything sweet. But biblical thankfulness introduces you, introduces us to the sweetness of Jesus. 
in a way that quenches the bitterness of your circumstances. When you have the sweetness of Jesus and you measure all of life's hard against who he is, his sweetness outweighs the bitter by infinity. There is no comparison. Thankfulness will not change your world. It just won't. But biblical thankfulness will change you. And you, in turn, will change the world around you. When we change, when our viewpoint change, it affects how we interact with the world, with the people that we love, with the people that we have a hard time loving. And they will see that change and they will be turned to Jesus as well. Thankfulness isn't the end goal but it is a direct product of the quest of that goal. That goal is the joy of glorifying God. And that is the whole point of absolutely everything we do. It must be the whole point of everything we do. Biblical thankfulness is the reflection, response, and result of pursuing our highest achievement, knowing God. When you think about it, everything we do here on earth is in, in anticipation of heaven. And heaven is all about being in the presence of God. And even that, hmm, when you think about being in the presence of God, unless you know him, it doesn't sound very wonderful. But as soon as you do know him, that's all, that's the absolutely everything that you desire. In knowing God, we are compelled to thankfulness. And in that reply, we know him more. It's very, it's almost circular, but it's one of those most beautiful circular things I've ever seen. This book's purpose is to encourage your heart to know God better and thus be transformed in the resulting trust, peace, joy, and hope that is exclusively offered in knowing God. Simply reading this book will not give you all the answers to an enjoyable life, afford you happier circumstances, or make everything better. Expect instead to be offered a small arsenal of insights into God's goodness and sovereignty. May you allow these insights to grab your heart and pull you into a sprint down the path of celebration, urging you to chase after his glory with a wild enthusiasm. The thought is not to equip you with pieces of who God is so that you end up just plodding along the same way. I want to infuse it within you an excitement, an enthusiasm, a hallelujah, hip, hip, hooray, that will just push you into a run to want to know more. This book was built to supplement your daily pursuit of knowing God more. This isn't all there is. Go deeper, go deeper on your own, go deeper regularly even if it is simply listening to an audio Bible, do something, do it on purpose, do it intentionally, and then let this supplement what you're already doing. My prayer is simply that it will infuse you with a stronger desire to live in his presence more fully, more deeply, and more gratefully. Thankfulness is not enough. There needs to be the gospel. It needs to be hinged on who God is, on who he has revealed himself to be through Christ. And so as we go through this, I'll be going just through one chapter each time, and hopefully it will be an encouragement to you. Um, I know that it is a learning curve with tech for me, and um, I'm sure that even through all of the little hiccups, whether it's alarms going off or cats jumping up on places where they shouldn't be or the fire marshal shutting me down because of the 40 million cords I have everywhere, may Jesus use our time to his glory, to our growth, to our, um, to our good, and may this be all for him. So thank you so very much for joining us. Um, if you have not subscribed to the email yet, please, please do so. Um, it has all of the links to the songs and to all of the um, free downloads. And I wanna make sure that you are equipped with everything that I have the means to equip you with um, to encourage you in your walk of knowing God more. So thank you again very, very much. Have a good night, rest well, and um, I'll see you all in two weeks.